Uh, I'm Dave Jones, and uh, I figure I'd talk a little bit about doing uh, Rails 2 to 3 upgrades since I've done a few and then I'm in the middle of a few. So uh, here goes. Okay, why would we want to upgrade? Well, there's really no reason that you have to, especially right now, but uh, Rails 3 has a lot of nice things going for it. Like they've completely refactored a lot of the internals and you know separated it out into more modular pieces um, so you can do with or without parts that you don't need. Um, pretty soon you're going to be able to have mountable apps. Uh, engines are really nice. Uh, you know, the query syntax uh, uses the relational algebra thing, which is really nice to have, I, from what I hear. And, uh, I don't know, just things are nicer and cleaner in general. And uh, definitely if you stay on the, the old two branch, that over time, things are not going to be released for that. In fact, I'm already seeing a lot of stuff being released that's Rails 3 only, um, that is not exactly portable. So, some good reasons too, uh, and of course, as always, the further behind you get, the harder it's going to be to catch up if you ever decide to. Alright, where should I start? I figure I'd just talk real quick about, uh, like, RVM is the Ruby version manager. So since we're switching from one, uh, an app running on Rails 2 to one running on 3, we probably want to separate that so we don't end up with immediately a broken app. We can always roll back to what it was. Um, you can track your gems and stuff like that. So it, it's not strictly needed, but it would be very nice and that's the, uh, the way I will be doing it and recommend. Uh, Rails Upgrade, which is a collection of rake tasks and uh, scripts that will Go through your code base and look at things that are very non non Rails 3-ish, and give you tips on how to improve them. That's made by Jeremy McAnally uh, of uh, Intridia, and it's very handy. Um, he also has a book that you can buy for dollars. Yes, there is. He he put out a, a series of blog posts about doing the upgrade. And he had compiled them into an, an ebook or a PDF or whatever that you can buy. I think today it is still six dollars, um, but normally it's twelve dollars. So if you're going to do this, it's probably not a bad investment because this will take time and it will probably hurt. Um, what else? Check your dependencies. So if you use uh, or rely on a bunch of gems and plugins there's a fair chance that somebody has released either a patch to make it work with Rails 3 or a Rails 3 compatible version. So if you can make sure that that exists before you make the jump, that's probably a good idea. Or you can find a, an alternative that does something similar. Like I think we're on Ferret and uh, we're going to switch probably to Solar because there's just no, the support's not there and it stinks anyway, so <laughs> why not? All righty. Would you include moving to Bundler if you're not already on Bundler as part of that? So, yeah, Rails 3 actually is Bundler by default, basically. So, right. Who well, would you recommend porting your Rails 2 app to use Bundler? I did, and I'm very happy to have done that. It has definitely eased a lot of dependency-related issues in general, but I wouldn't say it's strictly necessary. It makes the I mean, if you're already going to do the upgrade, like there's probably not a point in fixing your uh, your two to do that. But I think there's value in it. Is there any gap, or is there a benefit of one over the other RVM gem sets versus Bundler? Uh, well, with the gem sets, you can flip flop back and forth between your new Rails three app and your old Rails two app. Um, because I know that on more than one occasion I'll try to upgrade an app and I'll have to back out for whatever reason because I hit one of those showstoppers and then I kind of go in and start fixing something else or uh, you know fixing a library or whatever but you know 
You can fake it. And yeah. Use the platform flags and use like online two or something. <laughs> and switch between like seven. Probably not a good idea. You know, a lot of that stuff you can do to prepare uh, is good, and I did a lot of it, but then I found out that there's a lot less that you actually need to do than you are recommended to, because in Rails 3.0, there are compatibility shims for a lot of the big stuff. Like, you, uh, if you run into Rails uh, upgrade uh, scripts, it will tell you, hey, you need to change out your router, and hey, you need to... Um, put the equal sign on all your uh, form tags and stuff like that when in reality it will work just fine on Rails 3. Now you're going to get deprecation warnings but you can fix those once it's running so you don't have to spend a lot of time fixing your Rails 2 app to be perfect before you start doing this. So just kind of uh, I forgot what I was going with that. Alright so I don't know if you guys remember especially ones that have not been here before. But there is a project called Daibasu, which a uh, friend of the, uh, the NDRB, David Ray uh, Christiansen, uh, wrote and displayed on one of his other <coughs> meetings, and we've used it a couple times since then. So. This is going to be very slow, isn't it? Okay. I guess there's nothing interesting on this page, so I'll just fire up the app um, once I get it running here. So I forked this repository into my own so I could uh, fix it up a little bit before doing this because you know, it wasn't a good 2-3 app to begin with. So, let's see. Uh, so I'm just pulling the code down. So since this is a Rails 2 app, I need the environment set up for that. So let me just look at uh, yeah, config environment RB is telling me this is 2.3.11, so I need to install that. So let's see. Well, first I'm going to make me a gem set. I've already got one pre-made because we don't want to wait forever. But uh, okay, Jim. Jim, install Rails dash f version three dot zero. Oh, wait, that's not what I want to do. I'm sorry. 2.3.11. Sorry about that. Whatever, you can pretend it's installed because it is. That, see. You can also pretend to rage at it generating <laughs> the documentation even though it's completely <laughs> unnecessary. <laughs> No, I've got that in my generous C, it won't do that. Um, okay, so we've got Rails, so I can just do script server inside the folder, and it should fire up a little WebRick server for me to mess with it. Um, it's all tab not working the way I expect. Did I move it? There we go. Oh, localhost 3000, here's our server. Oh no, no such table. Bum, bum, bum. This is disorienting, I should have mirroring or something. So, no such table. We need to create the tables. 
duh. So break db create. All right, break db uh, schema load. All right. Wait, sorry. Script. Running application. So, Dave's a weird guy, but <coughs> Daibatsu is some kind of Japanese term that is what's basically what's the worst punishment you can dole out to somebody. Um, and he had created a survey application in Rails to demonstrate some of this. So, there's no data here yet. So it doesn't really know. The survey really stinks. So let's just go to punishments and add some stuff into the database. So let's say uh, I need to bump that font up. Huh? There we go. Do -do -do. What is this? Uh, I don't think the description is actually used for anything, so I'm just skipping it. Mm, yeah, beatings. Uh, <laughs> what else? Anything good? Jersey Shore Marathon? Jersey Shore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about? <laughs> so let's, let's go back to our survey. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to the home page. So that's supposed to be his admin console. It's obviously not protected, so. So, I guess the concept behind this app is you just add your name and you say what you think is appropriate and its level of appropriateness. <coughs> and then on the back end, he can do some analytics with that or something. So, let's say quiet treatment, occasionally, sometimes, never, never, never. never. Rarely. There you go. So you get this nice little matrix of uh, who has answered what and numbers. I think it might be nice if this was like a heat map or something where it gradually got redder, but anyway. And he had some mobile stuff. You can't really tell the difference though. So that's our working Rails 2 app that we're going to upgrade, so let's do that. <clears throat> First thing I probably want to do is install that plugin, the Rails upgrade. So let's just, I'm going to do that. Uh, let's say script, plugin, install. Okay, and it gives us a little spiel about how you can use it. So you can run upgrade check and it will give you a nice report. Backup, make backup files that are generally going to be stomped on when we do the upgrade. And some route stuff, and gem file stuff. So we'll just start with the beginning then. It's a good place as any. Rate upgrade check. So saying we've got a problem with our secret session. 
and here's a link on what that means. We've got, uh, and it actually tells you exactly where I found it. So that's handy. Routing, have to change this file. Test helper is going to need to be changed. Config application. And ERBs, now use that for form tags or anything that yeah uses concat which uh, groups a bunch of stuff together and tells you exactly where the problems are so this is really handy and you could go through while your rails is still too and mess with that um, I'm not going to I'm just going to jump right in so I'm just do my rails upgrade back up and it's just saying it backed up a bunch of files to a dot rails to extension and a little, a little bit of tips. Now, since I'm going with Rails 3, I'm going to create another gem set. Of course, I've already got it around. So, RVM use, RE at, I want to, Rails 3. And you can pretend I just gem installed install rails dash dash version 3. Oh. I'm not going to do that because it's too slow. Gem list shows I've already got it. Notice it's broken up into a lot more pieces and does depend on things like bundler. Sorry. So now I've got Rails 3, so Rails dash dash version should give me 3.0. Wonderful. So what we're going to do is basically generate a new Rails app on top of this one. So one of the nice things about Rails 3 is even though you have to change a bunch of stuff, it doesn't actually stomp on any of your code because by default a Rails app is almost empty. The app folder itself is virtually untouched. So we're just going to do this. Since we got our backup files anyway, it's not going to hurt us. I'm just going to do Rails, New, and give it the current folder. And okay, now it's like, oh, there's already a readme in this folder. You want a new one? Yeah, sure, why not? I didn't do anything to it. Rake file, yep. Yep. What is this? Get ignore? Yeah, sure. Application controller, okay. Da, 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 da. Application layout, no, there's nothing they could have put new in there, so I'm gonna leave that. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Routes, no, I'm gonna leave that alone too because I know that Rails 3 will deal with my routes until I'm ready to fix them. And environment.rb, yes. Development, yeah. Production, test, yes. Yes. Yes, farm types, session store, locales. I mean, if you say no to most any of these, you'll probably mess up the upgrade a little bit. We got backups and we got git, so. Seeds, yeah, yeah, whatever. Development.log, who cares? 404, yeah, 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 yeah. Controls, okay. Uh, the new version of Rails has a newer version of prototype. So if you're depending on some specific version of prototype 1.6.2 or whatever, don't do this, but yes, I don't care. Yes, yes. Uh, some test stuff. Yep, yep, yep. And now we've got a Rails 3 app that will probably bomb out pretty good. Let's see. Rails server. Boom. Okay. New Rails defaults dot rb unrefined method generate best match. Okay, so news Rails defaults was something that was in there in Rails two. We can blow it away. Config initializers new Rails defaults. Let's try again. Okay. Looks like that worked. 
So let's go to the browser, to the cloud. Um, oh, welcome aboard. Okay. That means it's going to that public folder and looking for the index file that a new Rails app always has. I'm just going to delete that. Public, what is it, index? Yeah. Probably didn't need to restart for that, but. Okay. Undefined method mobile device. This one took me a minute to track down last time I did this, but hopefully that's behind me now. Where's that? At? Let me just do, 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 do. Let me bring this up here. And of course you can't see this. I'm looking for, was it mobile something? Okay. An application.html to DRB. Should have pulled that up in act, but it didn't. It's a method here in the application controller. So I'm going to the old version of the file and looking at what's different here. Can you see that? Let me make it bigger here. And here's the new version. There's nothing new in here at all. Protect from forgery is still there. I'm just going to do this. Okay, so we got it. Now it says no flash messages. Do, 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 do. Yeah, okay, flash messages. Hey, it found it. Application helper rails too. So, helpers, application helper, okay. And it looks like it's the only thing in there, but we need that to work. Control C. And I'm going to move that into the application helper proper. And hey, we've got an index page. Let's see how it works. Uh-oh. Deprecation one right there in the code. <laughs> Not ready to launch yet. Let's see. F.error messages was removed from Rails and is now available as a plugin. Yes. It is more modular and less convenient. So where's my console? Nice. Okay. Pull out this a few times to see what how it's going. Oh, I didn't even put a name on it. How about that? So we've got some unescaped HTML in our stuff. And that is in the flash messages. How handy. So da -da -da -da. No. Where's the mate? There we are. Okay, flash messages. So we've got an empty string. Uh, it flash, which is a hash that's always there. If it's empty, we're not doing anything. 
Else we're taking all the keys and a flash and the value of the key and we're sticking it into, okay, we're creating a content tag. So div with the content in the middle with an ID and concatenating that into this. And this is what's returned. So Rails 3 escapes everything by default since we're actually building markup that we don't want escaped. There's two things we can do here, as we can call uh, .html safe on the end of it, or on the application, what is it, the layout? Or we could do uh, raw. I think this is a, a helper. So let's just go ahead and fix it that way. Da, da, da. Okay. Not gonna see anything because the flash goes away, so let's fill it out again. This will be red. And yay! And that looked like it went up pretty well. Let's run the test suite, which I probably should have showed you that before, but it, did, it was all green, so. Okay, we've got some failures. So the test suite tells us that, hey, something's not working as expected, better than having to go and click through your app, you know, a hundred times uh, and get every single edge case. So let's see. We've got a bunch of deprecations, but I don't think that's what's causing the failure. Rails really should make better stack traces. I'm looking at the, okay, so this is the problem. Any instance. Oh, that doesn't work. Uh, so let's look for any instance. Da -da 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 -da. I know where it is. Yes, it is Mocha. So, da, 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 da. config. Environment.rb. Okay, so here's what it used to be environment.rb. A bunch of commented out stuff here. Okay, yes. We need Mocha. We also need SQLite 3 Ruby, but that is in the default gem file. So instead of doing config.gems calls in environment.rb, in Rails 3, and with a bundler enabled Rails 2 app, or any kind of Ruby app with bundler, you've got the gem file here. Pretty much the same thing, uh, but it handles it better in the background for you. So let's just declare we need Mocha. And don't care about the version. <coughs> All right. And to install that, we're just going to do, well, here, let me just try this. Script, oh, wait, Rails. Super. No? Usually complains about that. Where's the, uh, did I not save it? Uh, yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, normally it would stop me and say, hey, uh, you've got unstuff in your bundler, uh, your bundle file. That's not a real word, unstuff, I guess. Uh, you have un. Uh, help me out here. Unbundle? Yeah. Well, I need to do. It says, basically says, yes, run bundle install. So let's do that. And it goes through the gem file and makes sure you have all the dependencies on your system. So we're good to go now. Rails server. Oh, wait, I don't need Rails server. I need the tests. Rake tests. See if that fixed us up. 
Okay, zero failures, zero errors on that one. And same thing on the unit tests. Of course, we got a lot of deprecations here. But that's uh, essentially a working out. What else? Da -da -da -da. So, basically, you can go through here and fix these deprecations if you care to. So let's see, your routes is deprecated, use rails.application.routes, old router DSL, okay, maybe it's trying to tell me something. So, rake, rails, upgrade, routes, now this doesn't actually do anything, it'll just spit it up to the console, and it's very unhelpful. This also took me a minute to track down, which I will spare you, hopefully. But, um, in our routes file, which, keep, mind you, this is still the Rails 2 router. I, I opted not to upgrade that right away. I don't know if this is meant to work or not, but he's got map root as surveys. So that should point to surveys index. Shortcut that happened to work in Rails 2 and does not in Rails 3. So I'm just going to do uh, controller surveys action index. <coughs> and you are spared. So here's what your new route file is going to look like. I know it's uh, not good to look at that way. That looks pretty good. The new router has this nice syntax where you can do a shortcut for controller action. And he's got these uh, the default fallback route, which I don't believe is used in this app. We can get rid of that, but it's there. Uh, it's pretty nice. Also, if you were doing something like nested things, so like you could say, uh, what is this? Uh, then you could do nested resources that way. It's a lot nicer. But we're not doing that, we're just doing an upgrade assume it works. Uh, break test. Look at that. Got through the units without complaining. These block style helpers are deprecated. Please use this. And it tells you exactly where they are here. App use, punishments, form, HTML, ERB, uh, line one. Okay. So, form, 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 form. Do you remember what that was? Surveys. So, what it's complaining about is the form four blocks. And the idiomatic Rails 3 way is to put the equal sign there because it actually outputs to the browser. And he's using fields for, for subfields. So that's going to need that too. What else? Punishments form? Okay, yeah. Punishments. Okay. And it has one too. Alrighty. Ta da! No deprecations, no warnings there, and <coughs> switch back to the app real quick, make sure everything seems to be working okay. Jimbo 
loves that. He loves all this good stuff. He's a big punishment guy. So we get this nice little distribution. Jimbo definitely always thought this other guy did. That seemed to work out pretty well. And this is definitely not your average Rails app in complexity. But that's a good point of the way there. Um, let's see. There are more notes here somewhere. Okay, some common gotchas that I've not really touched on very much is that the F error messages for and the F dot error messages is part of that dynamic dynamic form thing that it asked me to install. So uh, if you look at these tests right here you get this nice little helper inside of a form block that just says error messages and this is one of those things where Rails was really opinionated and error messages actually has markup in it and they're like oh my gosh we can't have anything with markup in core Rails because you should be able to customize that any way you want so now if you do like a, uh, um, a scaffold it will have well maybe I can show you here yeah, it's kind of gross. Um, let's see. Rails generate scaffold uh, things. Okay. We got our things. And here's what their form looks like. If thing dot errors dot any, here's a div with an explanation, and they stick a pluralized thing errors count. This number of things prevented this thing from being saved. And then you get thing dot errors dot full messages dot each and you loop over them. That's way better. That's it's completely better. I can see why they went that way. But I'm old fashioned and I like F dot wait equals F dot error messages. Just just call me old fashioned. So the so one thing that the the thing that they did actually does enable is customize messages are easier to make. But that was a real hassle for me else to and hard to do on a case by case basis. That is true. Uh, error messages, full messages is pretty nice. So um, they went they went full <coughs> Yeah. Know. Well Ideally, you should write your own little helper that, that concatenates, kind of like we did with the, uh, the flash messages, where you can just bundle that up logic into a little helper or something, or a template. The nice thing is it's there if you need it. You yeah. And, you know, all the stuff that was real common in Rails is, is been backboarded. I mean, stuff that was in core Rails has a plug-in now. So... Link to Remote and the other built-in prototype helpers. So, Link to Remote, Button to Remote, Form for Remote, uh, which would dump a whole bunch of ugly prototype into your view if you like ever right-click view source. Um, they were pulled out. Now Rails has the Rails.js, which loads, and based on whether you're using prototype or jQuery or Move Tools or whatever, there's that is a compatibility shim to look at your. Uh, your markup will have like a data remote equals and uh, it'll handle that stuff the same way it did before but if you're using that kind of stuff your JavaScript's just not going to work so here's a, a plugin that will make it work the way it used to not a big deal uh, we touched on this so anything with the equal sign is HTML escape by default so if you put markup in there it's gonna you know, convert it to its percent sign LT or ampersand LT and things like that. So four, you would have to have like H around your call. And because of the way it marks strings with HTML safe, like now it has to check on every render, is this thing HTML safe? And if it's already escaped, it won't double escape it. So. Uh, you really don't have to pull all the H's out. Of course, they're worthless now. Yeah. And lib is no longer in load path, so I know that lib is kind of a junk drawer for a lot of Rails apps and stuff. 
and uh, it's pretty easy to add it back. I can show you here. Environment. Is that right? No. I'm sorry, what? Oh, is it? Yeah, most stuff that used to go in environment RB is now an application RB. I forgot about that. And yeah, that's pretty much what you got to do <coughs> if you got stuff that lives in lib or any other folder. Um, so what's the uh, Rails three way for things you normally would put in lib? Just put it in lib and come out flying? Well, I don't know. Uh, I'd say that Rails three. I don't know. Probably there's the concerns the thing, but I don't know if that's really a default. I mean, there's not actually a concerns folder in this generated app. We no. have a whole application. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, if you can if you can turn them into even plugins or gems or something like that, I mean, that's, <coughs> that's good. Or either that, if it's small enough, initialize. Yeah, it. config initializers so where you put a lot of that stuff. Uh, a lot of ours is uh, like break tasks. Yeah, you get lib tasks and all that. Yeah. yeah. This is one of the things that will definitely blow up when you upgrade, which is why it's nice to just just get it working before you start refactoring uh, and doing a lot of that good stuff. Okay. So you can have any. I mean, we pre-prepared um, by adding like uh, what is this? Uh, it's using config. Right now. But I mean, the rig tasks. I I think the lib. Directory is still the right place. Mailers, and then we moved our mailers in there to prepare. No, it's just the place to put it. I think that's the whole point. Really? Uh, let's. Yeah, there's a lib folder. Tasks. There's nothing in it, though. No default rakes. Uh, there's the rake file. Which, you know, I don't know. I have a lot of stuff in lib too, so. And, oh, that's not very good. I'll fix that. But basically, I've got some sources from Jeremy McAnally's blog, which where he goes over these, uh, if I can bump that up. It should have been on different lines. Uh, and then there's a Rails Upgrade Handbook, which is really nice. And like I said, as far as I know, I checked right before the meeting, it is still $6. And there's a peep code blog where uh, Jeffrey Grossenbach uh, basically goes through this process as well um, with some nice animated blow-up explosions. Uh, and this is really old and really early, but it's better than nothing. And I would recommend that handbook. I've got a copy. It's pretty nice. If I Pull it up here real quick. And he talks about a lot of things I do in much more detail. Uh, what is this? And Jeremy knows what he's talking about. So if you uh, are interested in doing this, it's definitely worth at least going back to his blog archives where these were created and looking them up if you can't afford to pay or just don't care to. And that's uh, that's about all I got. Sorry for boring you, but uh, I figure it had to be done sometime. So thank you.